When we started investing, all we wanted was someone to walk us through step by step exactly how to analyze a stock. No one did it for us, but we're gonna do it for you. I'm Steve. I'm Kian. And this is The Learnings Report, a show where we make investing accessible and understandable for everyone. Today, we're gonna to give you a high level, step-by-step -step walkthrough of a stock analysis and what you need to look for. We're gonna analyze two companies and benchmark against them each other. One is a company called Futu Holdings, which has been coined the Robin Hood of China, or at least one of them. And the second company is a company by the name of Up Fintech, or Tiger Brokers, and again, like the first company, are also coined to be the next Robin Hood of China. This is part two of our How to Pick Stock series. In part one, we did a qualitative analysis, or in other words, the non-number stuff that you look at when analyzing a company. Stuff like its leadership, its competitive advantages, and its growth potential as a company. If you haven't yet watched part one, you can check it out here, or check out the link in the description below. In this video, however, we'll be doing a high level quantitative analysis, or in other words, the number stuff that you wanna look at when analyzing a company. We're talking revenues, profit margins, debt, and all that other fun stuff. But don't worry, you don't need any sort of finance or accounting background to understand it. Just follow step by step, get a bit of practice, and you'll be good to go. All right, let's do it. So first things first, you wanna open up Yahoo Finance. Pretty much every bit of analysis that you wanna do when analyzing a stock, you can do on Yahoo Finance. So what I like to do is open up a couple of tabs. The first tab can be your first company. So in this case, we're looking at Up Fintech. The second tab is gonna be Futu Holdings. Again, just have it on a second tab so you can benchmark and look back and forth. And then I also personally, like to open up a site called morningstar.com. It's pretty much the same as Yahoo Finance, but some of their user interface I prefer uh, using myself when looking at certain aspects of the analysis. So again, personal preference, but it's up to you whether you use it or not. For now, let's just start with Yahoo Finance. So first thing you wanna do is just type in the name of the company that you've, you're about to analyze. In this case, I already have it up, but you can just type in here and see what ticker symbol comes up first. Click on it and it pops the company. If you've already watched part one of this series, you'll already have a list of companies that you're interested in or want to investigate further. As mentioned earlier, for this example, we're gonna be looking at two companies that are coined to be the Robin Hood of Asia. Robin Hood, as you're probably already aware, offers free trading uh, for stocks and options, primarily based in the US at the moment. So before you even dive into any of the numbers, it's always worth jumping over to the profile tab and having a look at, okay, what is the company? Where are they based? What sectors do they operate in? And who's leading the company? We can see for Up Fintech that they're based in Beijing. This gentleman here is their CEO and director. It doesn't look like he's the founder. Um, but you could probably do a little bit more research on that yourself. And down here, most importantly, is a description of the company and what they do. As you can see here in one line, it says Up Fintech provides online broker services focused on Chinese investors. Number one thing when analyzing a business is to understand one, what it does, and two, how it makes its money. Similarly, you may go over to Futu Holdings. We jump over to their profile. Here, we can see that the, the, the CEO is also the founder, which is great to see. They're based in Hong Kong. And again, you can read the description, get a little bit of background, and just make sure that you understand the company. Once you've got a bit of background on the company, jump back over to the summary tab, and we can start doing our first part of the analysis. So before we dive in, it's really important to caveat that the analysis we're about to do shouldn't qualify or disqualify a company from your research based purely on what you find. They should simply serve as guiding points to help you along with your analysis and to decide whether the company you're looking at is even worth delving into further or if it's one to give a miss. It's unlikely you'll find a company that ticks all the boxes of your analysis, so just take note of the good things, the bad things, and then make a decision once the analysis is complete. Okay, back to it. So at first glance, you'll see a lot of numbers, a lot of red charts, but again, just focus on the most important things. First things first, you wanna look at the company's share price. Although it's important to take note of what the share price is, it shouldn't really play a big part in your analysis because it's redundant for a number of reasons. The first is price is not an indicator of value. 
So just because a company's share price is really high or really low does not indicate whether it's a good or a bad investment. Secondly, due to the introduction of fractional shares, where once upon a time you would have needed the full share amount to invest in a company. So for Futu's example, in order to buy one share, you would have needed $152. Now with the introduction of fractional shares, you can invest in one company's share for as little as $10 and just own a fraction of a share. So again, just important to keep note of, but it shouldn't really have much weight in your analysis. Once you've got taken out of the share price, let's jump back over to our first company. We can see that their share price is just under $24 at the moment. Great. Now we look down at the chart. What this chart does is it shows the trend in the share price of this company over a number of period of times. As long-term investors, we don't really care anything about one day, five day, one month or six months. What we like to see is at least a one year horizon. And ideally we also wanna look at five years. And if you want, you can look at the max. We can see that this company has been public since March 20th, 2019. And we like to see that after initial burst, it was pretty flat, but again, it's been going up steadily since then. Similarly, when we go to Futu Holdings, we can see over one day, one month, it's a bit choppy and churny, but over one year, five year and max, the trend in price has been steadily upwards. So that is a check in our books. Next thing we wanna look at is the market capitalization of the company. You can find that figure here. Market capitalization is an indication of the overall value of the company at this time. As you can see right now, at the time of recording, up FinTech's value is just over $3.3 billion. You don't need to know how to calculate this number yourself, but if you want to, you can simply take the share price, go over to statistics, scroll down to this figure here for shares outstanding, and simply multiply the number of shares outstanding by the share price to get the total market capitalization of the company. Why is it important to take note of the market cap? It simply can be used as a benchmark to indicate the company's relative size. We can see that Up Fintech's market cap is just over 3 billion, whereas Futu's market cap is 20 billion. A company's market cap falls under six main categories. Mega cap, large cap, mid cap, small cap, micro cap, and nano cap. Mega cap is any company that is valued at $200 billion or more. Large cap companies are anything between 10 billion and 200 billion. And many of the companies that you're probably gonna look at analyzing will fall under this bracket. Mid cap is anything between 2 billion and $10 billion. Small cap is 300 million to 2 billion. Micro cap is 50 million to 300 million. And a nano cap is anything under 50 million. You're unlikely to know many of the companies that are trading for that price. And why is market capitalization important? It can really give you an idea of how much room the company has to grow relative to say its competitors or companies operating in a similar industry. So for example, as we saw earlier, Up Fintech's market capitalization is just over $3 billion. If we go to Futu Holdings, we can see their market cap is considerably higher at a valuation of just under $21 billion. Why is that important? That means that if we look at Tiger Brokers, as a investor, you can then argue that, okay, that means if I invest $1,000 into Futu or into Tiger, and it can grow to the same size as Futu, I'll get a 7X return on my investment. To put that in context, reportedly, according to a recent article, we've seen that Robin Hood has been valued at just under $40 billion on the private markets. So if we can argue that Tiger Brokers or Futu Holdings can grow to anywhere close what Robin Hood has been valued at, we're looking at a significant increase in value from $3 billion to $40 billion for Up Fintech. And similarly for Futu, they would grow 100% in size if they were to be equal in value to Robin Hood. Of course, the main takeaway here is that $40 billion does not necessarily mean it's the ceiling for these companies. They can grow considerably on beyond that, but it's good to just get a relative benchmark of what you're dealing with. Okay, after you've done that check, next thing you wanna look at is the PE ratio. Don't worry, you don't even need to understand what the PE ratio is. All you need to know is if there is a number here, the company is currently profitable. And if there is not a number here and it says NA, it means the company is currently unprofitable. So jumping over to Futu, we can see that currently they are not actually profitable. Traditionally, the PE ratio of a company is used by some to indicate whether a stock is either cheap or expensive. 
it tells you how much investors are willing to pay for one dollars of earnings in that company. The higher the ratio, the more investors are willing to spend. For Up Fintech, we can see that they have a very, very high PE ratio. We can look at that in two ways. One, the stock would be extremely overvalued and expensive, or it could be that investors are seeing a lot of future growth potential for the company and are pricing in that growth into the ratio. You don't need to know how to calculate the PE ratio, but just so you understand it, it is found by dividing the current share price, which you can find here, by the company's EPS or earnings per share, which is this figure here. When comparing PE ratios, it's very important to only compare companies that are operating in a similar industry. That's because if you compare the PE ratio of a tech company versus a, say, a company that is in retail or in the food and beverage industry, you are likely to see drastically different PE ratios. Okay, after that, we can jump over to the statistics tab. There are a lot of numbers here, but let's just pay attention to these first two, market cap and enterprise value. All you need to care about is if the figure beside market cap is higher than that of enterprise value, the company has more cash than debt. Vice versa, if the enterprise value of the company is higher than the market cap, that means that the company has more debt than cash. As long-term investors, we like to see companies that have more cash than debt, but again, it doesn't necessarily mean that it should make or break your investment thesis if, for example, they do have more debt than cash. However, we do like to see a company that has a strong cash balance because it means it has money for expansion and growth. Jumping over to Futu, we can also see that Futu has more cash than debt also. Once you're happy with that first five check process, we can take a deeper look into the company's financials. First thing we want to do is click on the financials tab and come down to this screen. Again, a lot of numbers here, but what we want to focus on is the first line, total revenue, second line, cost of revenue, and the third line, gross profit. You read these charts from right to left and you can see it's done on an annual basis. All we want to see is that this revenue is increasing year over year. 2017, we can see that it was just under 17 million. 2018, 33 and a half million. 2019, 58 million. And TTM is the trailing 12 month average and that's obviously for the previous 12 months. And we can see they're currently generating over a billion dollars in revenue. That's a check from us. However, we also wanna look at the cost of revenue. Of course, this is simply what do they need to spend in order to generate this revenue in the first place? This could be for raw materials, salaries to pay people who are working for the company, and so on and so forth. What we like to see is revenues increasing, but of course we want to see gross profit increasing as well. And gross profit is the difference between the total revenue and their cost of revenue. We can see that in 2017 they had positive gross profit, 2018 they took a hit, but it's been positive again since 2019. So again, that's a positive sign, that's what we like to see. You might hear the terms gross margins widening or narrowing. Margins widening is a good thing. Basically, if you're making more profit, it's costing you less to produce goods and services. The less it costs, the more money you take home. You can open up Morningstar, type in your company, click key ratios, full key ratios data. That will then open up this window and you can simply look at the chart, which I've highlighted here, to see what the company's gross margins are. As you can see in 2016, negative gross margins, 2017, okay margins, 2018, again, negative margins, and then just under 20% in 2019. The thing that we like to see here though, is that in the last 12 months, they've increased their margins to about 37%, and hopefully that trend continues to do so. As a rough benchmark, you wanna see a company's gross margins of about 50% or more, but if the company only has gross margins of say above 30, that's still okay, but you probably wanna really believe in the company and its growth potential in the future. Anything below 30%, you're getting into a little bit more risky territory. Okay, once we've checked out gross margins and revenue, we can then go down to the bottom line. What is the bottom line? The bottom line is net income, and think of that as a fisherman catching fish in his net that he gets to bring home. Net income is the profit that you can take home after all your expenses are catered for. Looking at Up Fintech, we can see that their net income is just over seven and a half million dollars currently. Our goal when we're looking at net income is of course that we just wanna see a company's earnings rise along with its revenues. 
just because revenues are increasing does not mean that net income is increasing. So ideally, we wanna see both happen at the same time. Okay, now let's check and see what the analysts are saying. Jump over here and click the analysis tab. First thing you wanna look at is how many analysts are covering the stock. This is just an indicator of how many analysts are actually covering it and the level of interest in the company. We can see for up fintech, it's currently at one analyst. For Futu, we can see it's at five. For bigger companies, you're likely to see 30 and 40 analysts covering a stock at any one time. Now let's have a look at the analysts' estimates. When looking at these estimates, first of all, jump down to revenue. Once you're looking at revenue, jump down to the average estimates of revenue. Yes, there's low estimates and high estimates, but of course, we wanna take the average just as a benchmark. We wanna look at what is the expected revenue growth target for both this year and for next year. Looking at up FinTech, we can see their current revenue estimate is at $133 million, whereas next year's revenue estimate is at $209 million. Of course, you can do a rough calculation of what that is in your head, or you can simply jump down to this figure here, and you can see that they're expected to grow their revenues next year by 57%. To contrast this, let's have a look at what Futu Holdings are looking at doing. We can see that the current average revenue estimates for this year is just under $400 million, whereas next year's revenue estimates are $647 million, or otherwise 63.5% increase in revenue. Looking at both these revenue estimates, we can see that both Tiger and Futu are looking at growing considerably over the next year. So what is a good sales growth rate? As a rough benchmark, anything over 20 or 25% is usually pretty solid. However, it varies industry by industry, company size, and how long the company's been operating. So make sure to take that into account when looking at a company's revenue rate. Smaller or fast growing companies will usually have a much higher growth rate than a company that's been around for a long period of time. Okay, next thing we're gonna look at is the company's earnings. Scroll up one tab, and you can see here the earnings estimates that analysts expect for up FinTech over the next year. Again, we wanna look at the average estimate, and we see that for the current year, they're expected to get a earnings per share of 12, whereas for next year, it's 26. Again, you can do the math in your head, it's over 100% growth, um, or otherwise you can just simply scroll down the page to growth estimates, and we can see here that next year's earnings per share growth is 116%. Again, that's a really good sign and something we wanna take note of. To contrast that, let's have a look at Futu's holdings. We can see that average, or the average estimate for earnings per share in this year is $1.17, whereas next year it's $2.19. Again, significant growth expected, and we can come down here and see that over next year, it's looking at growing 87%. What's the relevance for this? We can see that Tiger's earnings growth potential looks to be higher over the next year. But again, of course, we need to remember that Futu is considerably larger as a company, as we saw earlier when we looked at the market cap. Futu's holdings is 20.6 billion, whereas Tiger's, you might remember, is just over $3 billion. So that might seem like a lot to take in, but with a bit of practice, you'll get the hang of it in no time. There are plenty of other things that you can look at when analyzing a company, and you can go into a lot more detail. But as a beginner investor, start with that high level approach and build on that as you go. Many investors follow the crowd and they see these stocks going crazily high, such as GameStop and AMC Cinemas recently. But if you follow these steps, you should remain ahead of the crowd. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed the video and now know how to pick a good stock via numbers. That being said, some of that stuff might have seemed confusing. So if there's anything you need clarification on or just want to ask a few questions, do let us know in the comments below and we'll happily address them. Thank you for watching and we hope to see you in the next one.